And you know, it's really hard when you first start meditating and you, you've been playing rugby every single day of your life <laughs> and you go into these, this retreat and everyone's like super zen <laughs> and you're sitting there and you're like, sure, I'm not going to get through this. So, yeah, so that process, no one said it's easy. Who wants to look at your shit? Who wants to look at your, 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 your shadow side? Mm. No. No one wants to particularly bring all those things to light and say, oh, I've been a bad boy, you know, kind of thing. Like small acts, like something small in a day can make a big difference. You know, if every single human becomes conscious about that and that our children, we need, they need to also prosper. They need to have abundance too. You know, it's not just about us. And so... The um, and then... She ended up coming back, my stepmother, and, and, and she told me that my dad had been killed in an accident the night before. Um, and yeah, I just, I just broke down. I broke down in tears. And, and uh, yeah, just, I, I can't really describe the pain. I think we've all felt similar kinds of pains in our lives as human beings. But, but um, a 14-year-old boy to feel that kind of pain um, and really for me the first kind of experience in life of impermanence the impermanence nature of uh this life that we live in but then as i've learned more and my consciousness has evolved i've kind of like realized that that you know um those emotions that we feel are necessary to feel you know and for us to kind of just suddenly get over things, you know, life, it doesn't work in that way because if we try to just suddenly get over it and be strong, you know, it starts to affect different parts of our lives. And, you know, the, the camaraderie that was, was, was present at King Edwards was something so tangible and so, so incredible, you know, it was like, and, and so for me, it was a real honor and a privilege to be at King Edwards. And, and then, yeah, all these, all the mates, you know, you lose connection with them. And then suddenly um, I was off social media for, I think about five years through this process. So, so, you know, reconnecting back has just been, it's been really cool. And I, I just feel like it's the right moment for that, you know, but, but you King Edwards, ah, oh, come on the reds, you yeah, know, but maybe you could just tell us, but what was it like, um, playing for the Springboks for the first time. You, know? you, you're standing on the side, you're a 21 year old kid and you got to go now and you, you look across and you see the All Blacks and you see Jonah Lomu, Anton Oliver, Case Muse, all these guys that are, you know, how, how did I end up here kind of thing. But um, I just kept thinking to myself, I hope I don't drop the ball, you know, because yes. <laughs> it's like your first test match in the rain against the All Blacks. Like, okay, mm. yeah, thanks a lot for that. No, I think from a very young age, I'd always been kind of, uh, kind of been put in a place of leadership. But um, after my dad dying and, and going through that whole process, I think that I kind of shunned away from, from wanting to take le uh, leadership roles. And, um, obviously, um, my off field, there were some off field antics that were, 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 ta were taking place when I was a youngster, like I was 21 years old when I got into the team. So, so, um, so I think that those things perhaps affected what coaches and what the general kind of idea or feeling was about me as a leader. Maybe before when I was like really, uh, like, concerned by what other people thought and my ego is still very strong i would have been like you know i can't believe they're saying these things about me it would have caused it caused the like, like a complete drama um for for days you know maybe even weeks but in this case you know with the spiritual work and calming the mind and 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 more living from your heart and and really connecting and and stepping back more in a way from stepping back from all the social networks and the world of this, this world of the internet um, really allowed me to connect with myself. But I'm not sitting here for one minute claiming that I have the key to knowing who I am, but what I, because that's a daily work. And the daily work is like you say, when those triggers come up to identify, okay, cool, am I reacting or am I responding? Or um, how, how am I perceiving this situation? Am I, you know, going off a tangent 
uh, when something happens in my reality or am I able to be present with whatever comes up? I kind of put two and two together and I realized that, you know, I'm not going to be one of those uh, players that come to training with a long face, um, with the energy low and kind of affect the team in a negative way. And so even though it was really difficult for me at stages and, it, and I say, what was it difficult for? It was difficult for that part of me that was the psychological mind, the part, part of me that wanted, you know, if I could say like the ego that wanted to be number one, you know, and the, the ego that didn't want to let go, that accept that this was happening. And so there's, there's always that internal struggle that would come up for me. And I think it, it, it would come up for most sportsmen when they're not selected. For well, about the last year of playing rugby, I, I, I had always felt that there was something uh, worth exploring. And that was like our, kind of our spirituality, you know. And I had kind of always heard about yoga, but never really looked at it in the, in the way um, that I did back then. And more looked at it more as a physical, just a physical thing, you know, uh, as opposed to being a really spiritual practice that calms the mind and brings us into the heart space. So also seeing, yeah, the trauma that I've been carrying, different things that I'd absorbed into my body from, from playing rugby for all those years, the knocks and the aches and pains and all of these things. So um, I, I had done the 21 day fast and from that moment, um, it brought a lot of peace. And, uh, but there was still something inside that was like go, wanting to go in a search, you know? And um, I think that that was actually just searching for my own self, like, and it started with a lot of self love, you know, um, uh, for all of the things that had happened in the past and all of the things that were perceived as bad and um, things perhaps where I hadn't treated people in the way that I really wanted to, or that I know that knew that was good. Oh, I'm a, I'm a avid supporter of plant medicine. I think, you know, the, the reverence that I, that I have inside for plant medicine, um, and specifically, specifically for Madre Ayahuasca, um, which is, which is two uh, plants that are put together, uh, from the Amazon jungle and it grows now in the jungle. Um, and they make the concoction ayahuasca. Um, and I can honestly say that she, she, she completely shifted my whole life. You know, after that purge, I remember getting up and one of the, um, w one of the servers that was there, he came over to me and he just said, you are the light, you are the light, mm. brother. you are the light. And I realized in that moment that all of the things that had happened in the last 20 years of my life, I was. I was, by the grace of God, I was put into the situation to experience um, this medicine. And I was, I was given the opportunity to, in that moment, thank every single human being that had affected my life in a positive way, that had, that had influenced me and that had given me love. And, um, and I was able to, to really see the universe for the first time. And, um, yeah, I'll never forget that moment. It's, it's like, a, it's almost like a revelation, you know, when, when you, when you, when you have a moment like that. Waking at dawn, packing the